two households, both alike in dignity. In fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge, break to new mutiny. Where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes. A pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Kenneth always wanted, in all of his big blockbuster, you might call them, three-act ballets, a narrative that the audience could engage with. Romeo and Juliet is about the clash of two really, really prominent, strong households, the Montagues and the Capulets. Juliet, she's young, she's naive, effervescent, but this quickly changes throughout the story as soon as she meets Romeo. Romeo begins the ballet very boyish. He's with um, in the town square with his friends. He's having a good laugh. He's kind of playing around with girls. But the moment he steps into the Capulet Ball, his whole life changes. The first time Romeo and Juliet meet, there's an immediate electricity between the two. It's almost as if time stands still for them. Suddenly, he finds something that he's never experienced before. Instantly, that's interrupted by the Capulet family. Tybalt is nobleman of the Capulet family. He's very aware of Romeo, but the relationship only really kicks off and sparks and starts to get really nasty once this interaction happens with Julia. Because of the feuding families, two young people go behind everyone's backs in order to find a way to be together. Kenneth was always keen to find really good music and the Prokofiev score for Romeo and Juliet is one of the truly great ballet scores. That's what triggered the work. He was so brilliant at not only creating amazing dance sequences, but he was also really clever at being able to tell a story narratively. Macmillan has really eloquently expressed the different progressions of the relationship within the ballet that it's, um, it's quite unique, actually. One of the most significant pas de deux is the balcony pas de deux. It's the amalgamation of Romeo and Juliet's love for each other. You see this young couple break through from adolescence into emotional adult love through the workings of a tiny amount of the ballet, just the workings of the pas de deux. Then you have the contrast with act three, the bedroom pas de deux. They're both so desperate for their love to carry them through and it's the last time they touch each other, being alive together, which is so heartbreaking to look at. Romeo as a character, it really develops. You know, you start as one person and you really finish as someone quite different. If you really commit to it as a ballet, by the end, you really don't feel like you've got much left to give. I think Matthew is really a perfect Romeo. He's got that laddish childishness and is driven by his heart. When we step on stage together, we've got such a great trust in each other that it's almost like we breathe as one. Kenneth McMillan's work is undeniably a masterpiece. The culmination of music, choreography, costume design, set design is really, really special. Romeo and Juliet is filled with what happens in families, in relationships where you have warring factions. It's the power of love to try and transcend that. Love is the most powerful emotion that we experience. The story is timeless. The steps are timeless. That's why everyone loves this ballet.